Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the city of Tokyo. This is Shibuya. And this park is famous for one thing. Well, it's actually famous for many things, but we're going to be exploring, in particular, the toilet, which is right over there. You can see it in the right in the center of your screen behind the tree. Only in Japan would scouting out and looking at toilets as a theme for an episode be acceptable, perhaps. But I'm here to take a look at, at this is Nabeshima uh, Shoto Koen, which is a link in the description here so you can get a Google map to find it exactly where it is. That's the object in question. Do you see all of this wood here? This was designed by uh, Kengo Kuma, who is a very world renowned designer, um, especially after designing the Olympic Stadium, which is just, if you get into the details of it, it's just extraordinary. But Ken Gokuma as a designer has had an amazing evolution as well, um, going from cement to wood. And I'll talk a little bit about what I've discovered uh, about him as a designer. And um, I've actually had a chance to meet him a couple of times, have drinks with him. So that was a really interesting experience. And I might divulge a little bit of that on this live stream. It's a beautiful day in Shibuya. And it's even more beautiful when you have a toilet in front of you. Let me get my mask on because there's some people around here. Brandania is here. Welcome. How you doing, Wesley? Now, Kengo Kuma picked this toilet because this location for his designer toilet, because he liked the woods around it. Do you see? This park is is only it's less than a 10 minute walk from Shibuya's Hachiko Scramble. And I don't think a lot of you know about this park. And this is the reason why it's become even more famous because of the designer toilets that they have here. Um, I'm kind of kind of excited about this to explore because <laughs> I, I'm a fan of Kengo Kuma's work. I went down to a place called Yusuhara in Kochi Prefecture about uh, two years ago and I saw his work at the uh, public museum, uh, sorry, the uh, library. And actually I have a live stream on his design for the library. It's quite extraordinary. Um, you want to take a look at that. He uses wood in a very unique way. And it was Kochi's, the town, Yusuhara and Kochi, that really inspired him to change his style to more of a natural wood. Uh, let's get a little bit closer to the toilet. This opened up in, on, I believe, June 24th. You can see he's using a pretty, pretty good wood there. But it gives you the feeling of like you're walking in the park. Walking in the woods, sorry. So I'm in the center of Shibuya and it feels very much like I'm, I'm just walking in the woods. There's five toilets here. There's even one for kids which I think is, is pretty, pretty cool to have. It smells like the cedar, Japanese cedar, hinoki. It smells like an onsen. It's, it's kind of nice. So let's go inside this one. This one also is, is okay for kids. It's available. Wow. Again, these are all single use toilets. So you, you can lock the door. Look at the little TV toilet for the kitties. <laughs> this is like, it's about 30 centimeters off the ground and it's extraordinarily clean. Look at the sink is really small and then there's this little baby urinal for the kids there. Again, that's about 30 centimeters off the ground, which is pretty good for, you know, toddlers. I wouldn't know, my son's an infant. So that's the kids, kids restroom. Um, this is for I guess this one's designed for older people. There's a cane here. I don't know. It's available, so let's open the door and take a look inside. Okay, good. So there's there's a railing here which allows people uh, to hold on to it. And there's a, a pol post here. I guess you can put, hang your cane there or anything that you need. So this is good for people who need a little bit more. Um, uh, accessibility, this this certainly is more multifunctioning for a urinal for men. And there's even a peephole in there, so if you're doing your business, you can take a look and see who's inside, who's outside. Uh, this one is for regular dudes like me. 
So I would be able to use this one and it's available. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's just a simply a toilet. It's very clean. Um, I like the wood design going inside of it. No spiders, which is very unusual for Japanese park toilets. This is a public restroom. Uh, this is the dust closet here. So this is where you would go to clean it. Let's go take a look. There's two more here that we can explore. One of them might be the ladies, which I'm, I'm not allowed to go into. You're gonna have to use your own imagination in there. Okay, these are all, all multifunction. So let's take a, a quick look-see. Oh, the light is out. All right, so it's just basically a toilet. It smells pretty good in here. It looks like almost a five-star hotel toilet. That's pretty crazy. Look at the designer lights, lights behind the mirror. It gives you the feeling that you are in a five-star hotel. And again, these toilets have control panels. Oh, it's self-cleaning. It's self-cleaning. And there's a control panel here for flushing. And there's this, is it Otohime here? No, I guess you don't need the Otohime because Otohime is a, a thing that Toto designed. It's a good flush. It's a good flush. So the one up there was an accessible one. I'm guessing that the one down here is accessible because you don't have to climb stairs to get there. So the wood is made. I like this design very, very much. And the color of it, it doesn't stand out. Now, if you look at Google Maps, you can still get a look. Oh, here it is right here. The Nippon Foundation is the one that is putting together all of these really amazing toilets around the country. Look at that, it's got rope around the handle. I'm guessing the way it slides and the side of the door is much wider to allow uh, people with wheelchairs in here. So I'm guessing this one is the one for accessibility. Wow. Now this is the, the royal room, I guess you would say. Check it out, there's even a place for babies. So if you have to, you know, if you need to put the baby down somewhere, there's a place where you can do that and a changing station, I guess this turns into. Uh, there's a sink as well if you need to wash out um, uh, the, the bag. I forget what you, what you call people who have to uh, have, have bags can wash it in there. I, I learned that as well. I don't know all the terms for it, but I think you guys get the picture. And it's extremely clean and I love the space. There's a baby changing table there. And it looks very much like a, like, like a hotel would look. Very clean. So I, have to, I do have to say, this is an extraordinary toilet. <laughs> Spiders here. It's an extraordinary place. And yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the live chat. We're gonna take a quick look around this park here. I think it's an interesting park to explore and then document for the channel. And we'll, we're going to loop around. It's not a very big park. I'm going to loop around and then come back to the toilets here. How you doing, Jack and gang? Pretty amazing. Now, Ken Kuma, in an interview with the Nippon Foundation, said that he picked this location because it looked like a great place for a toilet to, to, to help change the image of public toilets. And in Japan, public toilets already have a pretty good image. That's even more incredible now. Look, there's a, um, see this hut, this looks very much Ghibli-ish. It seems so out of place because it is just a 10 minute walk from Shibuya's Hachiko Scramble. in a nice little pond here. So let's go, let me just loop around here. You can see there's a t TV crew already right, for some, I don't know, interview or show. It's not Kengo Kuma, but there's a water wheel. Check that out. This is not the image of Shibuya. Take my mask off here. This is not the image of Shibuya that I, I have at all. This feels like the Japanese countryside. I've never been to this park. 
it was it's such a small little blip on the map you don't you're not inspired to come here with all the other eye candy in Shibuya but literally I walked from Bunkamura and the Tokyo Honten department store which is right next to that mega Don Quixote from there five minutes to here crazy this is crazy and the deeper I walk in this park the more I can understand why Kengo Kuma chose this for his for his toilets Wow it just doesn't fit does it does this look like Shibuya to you listen to the sounds I think there are still a lot of gems to explore and discover in Tokyo. And no matter how many YouTubers and people and tourists and, and social media pictures of things that you, you see on the internet, there's always something new coming along. This opened in June 2021, just before the Olympics. The Olympics were a big bust. Um, but, well, for, for nearly everybody, the athletes did okay. But for, for the city of Tokyo, this project didn't really get a lot of highlight. And I'm glad that I could cover this today. Beautiful park. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come around and, and just take a look at the, the wheel here. You can see it's starting to move. This doesn't look like Shibuya people. It's bizarre. Brandania, thanks a lot. I saw that earlier. It's nice to have you here. All right, we're gonna we're gonna walk past this camera crew. Kind of scary around faster. I think they're doing a video for an app app. Uh, navigation app. There's the Kengokuma toilet on the other side of the park. It's, this is kind of a nice shot. Tony, I'm, Tony, I'm not gonna go for a swim. Is that a toy gun in there? There's a toy gun in there. I guess this, the, you know, Tony, this asks a lot of questions here. It begs, begs some questions. One, what happened to the kid that was holding that gun? Was he shooting them at crows? And did the crows take him? Fly him off into the sky and he dropped his gun on the way to their lair? I've got a lot of questions. All I know is that there's a toy gun in there. Something a kid would have and it, it, it makes you think the crows won. Something that happened in the middle of the night? I'm not sure. Police should investigate. <laughs> look at the look at the chat goes in here. PMX seems plausible. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Urban's here. The, is this in Japan? It is in Japan. It doesn't feel like it is. It doesn't feel like it's uh, Shibuya, but it is. You're lost in time. Up here, you have again. There's no smoking. I like this. The city of Tokyo, especially with Governor Koike when she came in here, she she really cleaned up the city. A lot of a lot of places are now non-smoking, so you don't have... Some old timers will do it. Is that the... That's the creepy Shibuya mascot. It's kind of cute and kind of creepy. Looks like something for Halloween. Could be something in Squid Game. Producers should explore Japan for new mascots. We've got a lot. All right, let's take a like, closer look at those toilets once again. Some pretty cool information on the wildlife you can find in the park. 
kawasemi. This bird eats fish? What? So that bird is here and it eats the fish, but these fish don't exist in this pond, so why are they here? And then there are some pretty old looking turtles. Nihon Supon. Interesting. And as we look for turtles, which are not in the house, we know one thing is for sure. WRX Turbo is in this house and not, not that house. That could be where Chan is holding up after he, I heard a rumor he'd escaped from the trunk and was holed up in the, in there, but there's no doors apparently. So don't know how even he got in. All right, let's look one more time, walk around the toilet. What are we doing? This is crazy. Walk, walk around the toilet before these people report me to the police for filming the toilets. It still, despite the fact this is Japan, it's kind of an odd thing to do. Up we go, the stairs. Kengo Kuma says that this is very much like walking in the woods. He wanted to give that feeling. Um, even if you look down, I like what they've done with this. This is something I didn't report on earlier. The ground is, is made with glued wood chips. So it does look very... And there's a piece of metal holding it all in place. It does look very natural, doesn't it? I think the wood chips give it uh, like a forest floor look to it. And again, it's so well groomed all around here. At night, if you do come, they do have these lights. Do you see the lights there? They give off, uh, I don't know. It's like going into Karuizawa, this really stylish town in Nagano and walking around there where they've done some amazing things with the designs. Yeah, so this is once again, this is the kids' toilet here, just so you know, for those that weren't here earlier. Everything is about 30 centimeters high. I see Michael Sasano's in the house, loving the walk in the park live stream. Make your way to a nice snack and beverage. Let's see what we can find as I walk, walk back towards Shibuya in a minute. Nice playground with a mosh pit in there. Sandbox, I guess you'd call it. So there you have it. That's the Kengokuma toilet. Let me take you over here to the corner. That's a really nice playground. Some of these playgrounds are shaped like pirate ships, which are, it's probably not the best thing, encouraging kids to be pirates. Don't know. What are those for? If this is a slide, that could hurt. Metallic stones. Yes, I know I'm too big. I'm not <laughs> trying to climb the playground. For sure, the police would be called. Um, no food trucks in the area. There is an app that allows you to, to, to find the food trucks. And if I do, I would definitely stop. It's lunchtime. Bob Joe, vending machine fund. Uh, I'm going to be doing another live stream in a little bit. Um, I'm going to... I wanted to do, I asked our, our um, insiders on this channel, what would they like to see me film in 8K for the next 8K upload? And I have with me in my bag here, uh, this is, oh, hello kid. I have in my, with me in my bag here, I have my 8K camera and I'm gonna be filming that episode for about 25 minutes. And I'll try to upload it tonight or tomorrow morning for you. Um, but people voted for Harajuku and Amote Sando, like 33% and I believe uh, Shibuya was second and Shinjuku, so I guess that's what we're going to be doing for the next uh, live streams here in 8, 8K. There'll be a premiere, so I'll, I'll just release this uh, tonight or tomorrow morning. I'm also editing. I'm also editing another video. Oh, by the way, we got two new, new. We got two more daimyo spots open. If anyone wants a package, I put in a little teeny uh, um, Tomi car. The Japanese taxis in there as well with the goodies, and. We still have a few spaces open for the uh, Osaka lunch. If you live in the Kansai region, Kevin, Ku Kevin Riley and I are giving a free lunch valued at 5,000 yen. And there's like a, like a, a swag bag of another 5,000 yen. So I think it's like 10,000 yen worth of stuff you get. We're still looking for a few good men and women. The area is pretty nice. I guess that's a police station there, so. This tower reminds me of, 
I just made a Facebook post on Only in Japan, so the Facebook post has the application, but I'll put a link in the description, or um, the moderators might put that in there. I forget if they, if they know that one. I do wish if you were here, you could, you could come, but for those that are living here, we're kind of calling on you to, to come and say hi. We have about 20, 22, 23 people signed up. So we're close to the limit. We might get more if we do. We'll have to, we'll have to uh, do a lottery. But right now, it looks like to, we're gonna have a lot of space. Again, this is Nabeshima Shoto Park in Shibuya City. Just a 10-minute walk from Hachiko, five minutes from the big Don Quixote and Tokyo Honten. Super place to come, and it, it's a surreal place. So when if you do come to walk in this park, um, it might be worth holding it in for another five minutes and making your way here to use. The cleanest, one of the cleanest toilets I've ever seen in the city of, of Shibuya, anyway. Right there. The Kengokuma toilets. I'll be back again one of these days. So. Leave, as we leave the toilets. I, 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 that's right. I just did a live stream on Japanese toilets. Uh, if you want to see it, t watch the playback. I'm now going to walk you back to Shibuya Station where I'm going to be starting the 8K. And if I can find a vending machine on the way, I will. So then uh, we can put the Michael Sasano's Super Chats to good use. The neighborhood is very nice. It's quiet. This is not too far away from what would be considered, you know, Japanese, uh, uh, Tokyo's uh, elite property here is certainly going to be in the millions of dollars. Um, you know, this, this location between, uh, you know, right next to Shibuya, which is a major hub for, for domestic train travel around here. Going towards Yokohama, Yamanote line. It's pretty pricey. So if you see somebody with, with a house in this area, they got some, they got some cash. One day when I'm... 70 i might be able to retire here don't think so but i don't think i would want to probably what would go out to the mountains or the seaside i think the crows took all that trash these nets are to, you put these nets over the trash so the crows don't get into them but i've noticed more activity among the crows recently they because the lack of people in the city Due, due to all these state of emergencies, the crows have sort of taken over in some way. I've seen them more aggressive, claiming vending machines, hopping on the top of them, being more aggressive towards people, including that little kid whose gun was found floating in the river. Please, please investigate that. I'm sure we'll find him. He's some, the crows dropped him off in Saitama or something. Look at that little portal. You walk through there, you go to Ghibli land. It's crazy. It's, I guess I can get one of these. It's a Pikachu vending machine. There's no Pikachu drinks. Hey, it's oh, go like only in Japan. Go vitamin power. Go. All right. I, I'll try that. It's like very interesting. Let's see if I get my my uh, IC card. This is an Ikoka from Ikoka from. Uh, oh, they do have other juices here. Okay. I still got eight thousand nine hundred yen left. Whoa. Go! Uh, this is, I like this emoji for the uh, a new logo. If I ever do the Only in Japan Go, I'll just steal it off this can. Or quote unquote borrow it. Should I? That. I don't know. I don't know if. if I don't think. I think Ikoka might be west and. I know she, there's about 12 different. 12 different um, IC cards for the train line. I think it's just Kansai. But I know Totori is using the Ikoka card too. So it goes from Osaka to Tori, Totori. This is Itoen. Oh man, 
This is Itoen, which may, is very famous for making the green tea. Right there, one of the most popular, if not the number one, with katakin, which is a, this really cool uh, thing that makes you look younger, which I could need to drink like two years worth in one day. Tastes like melted Pez. Why would they do that? I thought it was all natural or something. Ugh. They said there's jelly in here too. Nay. I like the logo though, but Ito and it, I thought it would be tea or something. It's a carbonated sweet drink. Like, like, um, what do you call that? Red Bull Monster? Ah, oh, this one has water here. Look, it's like a yellow. Do you see that? It's weird. All right, let's see what else we can find. I just powered up. All of a sudden, there's, there's a dozen fish that seem to be able to go upstream. All right, at this light, you make a left, and you're pretty much in the heart of Shibuya, which makes it pretty... I, like, I don't know why more people don't explore the neighborhoods around here. Some of the most posh, interesting restaurants are up here, too. We just passed a couple of them. There's a bar. Uh, Good Faucets is one where there's a lot of expats like Peter and, and, and uh, some other people that I know, dudes, hang out. Ugh, bright yellow. Ugh. Ugh. It's giving me the chills. Again, you can look up the street here. This is Shibuya. It looks like a small village. More subdued colors, more stylish. And then when you get into the center of Shibuya, it just becomes really messy. Look at that. That supermarket made of wood, uh, like wood outside, very designer looking. I think people who live in this neighborhood, they don't want to live in in uh, like the, the tourist places. This hill will lead you, and the, the interesting thing, this hill will lead you up to Love Hotel Hill, I believe. Maruyama Machi, I believe it's called, I forget. Byron Bay, isn't that in Australia? That's interesting. The Aussies are planting their flag here. Hair cuttery. Wow. Look at the people lining up for this. This is kare. Kareya-san. Rittoru shop. <laughs> Small curry shop. It says right there on the on the overhang. Look at the line of people. I can smell the curry at the window. It's lunchtime, so I'm going to have to make a trip there one of these days. I did spend two, three nights in Byron Bay. I was backpacking and I was living on, on Bondi Beach for a couple of months before the millennium in 2000. I met this surfer dude named Patrick, American. He was an engineer for six months and on vacation for six months, kind of the dream job. <coughs> and before he went, he wanted to, to go up to Byron Bay before he left to go back to Florida. So he bought, because he had a lot more money than all of us, he bought uh, a yellow van in, in Sydney, kind of souped it up and we put a, a bed in the back and four of us drove up to Byron Bay. It's a pretty amazing trip. This is the year 2000, right after the millennium. Or was it right before it? 1999, 2000, I was living on Bondi Beach. Pretty cool time. That's when Tom Cruise got on his motorcycle and buzzed the beach. I mean, everyone was talking about it because he was do, filming uh, Mission Impossible 2 there. I got a lot of stories from that time. It seemed the whole world was descending on Sydney, Australia for the millennium. The Olympics were coming that year. It was a pretty exciting time to be there. I had a job working under the table, uh, serving sh shaved ice to sometimes topless people at the, <laughs> mostly, mostly men, but a lot of women on Bondi Beach. Pretty cool. 
I was the ice guy. So when I went out drinking at Bondi Beach Hotel or some of the other places, they knew who I was. And if I recognized them, I gave them free ice. You could be that guy. All right, there you go, right in front of us. Right in front of us is, uh, this is Bunkamura, which is where a lot of theater and other, other really cool events take place inside of there. And in this direction is the big H&M. This is the Tokyo Honten, which is going to be torn down and built into something better. Uh, I, I think it needs the infrastructure changes and upgrades. And we have Viron, the French place. Don Quixote, which moved from this side of the street to the other side of the street for more space. That is a really beat up looking phone. Can't even open it. Oh my gosh. Only in Shibuya. Wow. It's weird stuff. I didn't go skydiving in Byron Bay. I don't know. Okay, the only thing that, that happened was that... So I was with two Canadians, Patrick, and then me. And I was the odd one out because I wasn't a surfer. I was like the mother of the group. I took care of everybody because they were into, you know, stuff. And I wasn't. So I would, I would be just have a couple of drinks. <laughs> and they were lost in a world. Oh boy, the stories I have really incredible from that time. Yeah, I've lived six or seven lives. Up here, you'll, you'll, this is where all the clubs are. A lot of them are anyways. Womb and some of the other ones are along the street here. Club Asia. And just over yonder, you see a lot of smutty... Um, Love hotels, which would be pretty interesting. There's, I think that's one right there. Hotel Plaza. That's the, that one might even have a star. And we're back in Shibuya. So this is how you would get to the, to the Kengokuma toilet. I think from here, all of you get the idea. Here's the Viron Mothership, which is where you can get pretty good French desserts and pastries. I'm probably going to use those super chats and get something for Kanai here. Click that thumbs up button if you like these toilet live streams. I'm serious because there is a couple more that I want to show you besides the one I showed you last year. The glass ones, they put in more and the Kengokuma one here is number nine in a series of toilets. In the distance is Shibuya Hachiko Scramble. You can see the on the side of the Shibuya stream building or one of them over there the monitor was shaped like a upside down Mount Fuji it's kind of a cool look all right time to start to fit the 8k film over there at Hachiko if you have any questions leave them in the comments below I want to say thank you to everybody this is the directions here's the Shibuya uh, Tokyo Honten department store and you would walk this way You'd walk this way to get to the park. Leave a comment if you have anything to, to add about this. And I will see you in the next live stream. Maybe a little bit later, but there will be an 8K upload soon. As well as an upload on the main channel with Eric Berg. Eric Surf, Surf 6 and I eating a lot of street food. I'm just putting a final touches on it. Got sidetracked a little bit for the Kickstarter fireworks project. By the way, I did start the Shakudama, so there are add-ons you can get. Shakudamas for our second festival in Yamanashi. The Shakudama and the Star Mines are up for add-ons, and I'm going to add them on as, as regular tiers later today. A lot of stuff going on, everybody. Have a safe and happy TGIF and weekend coming up. Thanks from Shibuya. Shibuya.